Hey everyone, welcome to Shane Shed. Uh, 2010 Holden Barina timing belt change. Uh, this is a 1.6 litre, I believe it is from memory. Uh, the TK Holden Barina, uh, also Chevy Avios, oh, Avios, Avio and Dohatsu, Day, Dohatsu, Daewoo, Kalios. Jeez, I'm mincing my words today. Uh, the thing with this job is I recommend doing the water pump as well because the water pump is actually part of the adjustment for the timing belt. So, uh, yeah, you've got your seal behind there, and it basically you need to rotate it. So I recommend you sort of pull it out and clean everything anyway, just to make sure that everything's going to seal again once you're done. Because that would be a bummer if you got into this and it leaked corn everywhere. Uh, you can buy a special tool for this. This is really rough, I've just made my own. Uh, it's 40 mil between the, uh, the flats. Uh, you could cut this down if you want, but hopefully this will do. I can just get it in and twist it around. That's all I'm planning to do. Uh, if I need to cut it down, I'll let you know, but we'll worry about that when we get to it. First things first, I'm gonna remove this right front wheel, uh, just so it's gonna be a bit easier to get to the crank pulley. Uh, and turn the engine over from there. So the eagle eye viewers and makes you would obviously rec recognize I'm not in my normal shed, so I'm away from home because I had a family member, so this is a family member's car. So I pretty much got to deal with whatever I packed in my tool bag uh, as far as tools. So besides that one special tool, I do have a little camshaft locking tool. I don't know how much use it's gonna be because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to remove the cam pulleys anyway. Uh, there is a locking, a factory special locking tool for this. I don't have it, so we're just going to make do with what we've got. So front wheel's off in order to get access to that crank, which is behind there a little bit easier. Just going to pull this uh, plastic tray out. So we've got two bolts up here and another one up here and another one over there. And hopefully that whole thing should just slide straight out. I hope I don't have to remove this uh, crash bar because I'm kind of using it to hold the car up. All right, so that plastic tray is out of the way and we can see we get nice access to the crank. So that's handy. Now we'll move up top. And air box is here, so we want to get in between here and we're going to have to remove that uh, front engine mount. So all this air box is gonna to have to come out. Obviously, we've just got a hose clamp here. There's a couple of the airlines, yeah, mass flow sensor plug. And there should just be a couple of bolts on the base of the air box. And hopefully the whole thing will pop out relatively easy. So I've just pulled that uh, vacuum hose, whatever you want to call it, off here, and that's out of the way. This is undone, broken free. That plug out of the way, and those three bolts were removed. So that whole airbox comes out, and we can see we get a lot better access now. So now we need to get the alternator belt out. Uh, tensioner is just here, just that pulley there. So for that, put that down below and get onto that bolt and pull it uh, that way and it'll release the tension. Now, unfortunately, it's a 15 mil. Unfortunately, it's a 15 mil, but it's just a little bit tight to get the socket in there, which is a bit of a bugger. Uh, there is a, that by, uh, in the way. So you're gonna need a ringy, uh, probably hopefully an offset one because that's kind of flat. Unfortunately, I don't have one with me So I'm gonna have to try and make do with a shifter. I know it's a no-no But yeah, you, know, you gotta do what you gotta do All right, So tension's off and we can just remove that from the vehicle There we go All right, so now time for this timing cover. So there is three on this bolts on this top so one there one there and one just under there uh, i believe this is a split half from that bottom part which there should be there's one well 
that's just that one just up there and I believe there's just that one there so that should be two on the bottom half I don't know we'll see how we go that timing cover is a bit of a squeeze uh, I've ended up there's just a little mounting bracket on this air con uh, power steering hose which bolts in just to here with that bracket there I've undone that just to loosen that off that was a uh, 12 mil and also undone the air conditioning line just on this bracket that's down here so that bolts down onto that little stud there so that was a 10 mil and that just allows this one a little bit of movement as well which helps a little so I'm gonna pull that bottom timing cover off now I think and we're probably gonna to have to pull out, well, definitely gonna to have to pull out this uh, engine mount at some point. And I say we're gonna to have to remove this pulley. So let's see if that timing cover will come off without removing that pulley first. So this bottom of the timing cover, we've got bolt here, bolt down here, and there is a third one up there in that little hole. Uh, but it comes around underneath the crank pulley so we're gonna to have to pull that one off in order to get that bit off so all of those were 10 mil and this one is a 17 I think it was yep 17 and in order to undo this I've just put a screwdriver up you can see the uh, the holes so I've just come in from this side and wedged it up against that uh, compressor frame uh, AC compressor frame and just undone it and it hasn't been incredibly tight but it's at a point now where I can just undo it pretty easily so we'll get that off so it's a pretty long bolt holding that on and also worth noting that that pulley is keyed onto your lower timing belt or oh, timing cog sorry so that little key there that's where it needs to sit back in uh, now that, that pulley's off uh, I can see that it didn't really matter for that bottom half the timing cover but anyway it is what it is it probably has to come off anyway to get that uh, belt off that lower half so I'll probably need to put the uh, bolt back in so I've got something to turn this over with and we can line up our timing marks so there's one timing mark and at the top we got another timing mark here and there will be another one down there now from memory I think they all line up in the center here all right so in regards to lining up the timing the arrow needs to line up with that little slot there now at the top we can see those timing marks they point to each other so there we go so with that in a happy spot uh, I'm gonna pull out this engine mount so I'm just going to put a jack under the engine just to hold it in place and then we can undo uh, these top bolts here these three and it'll be another three here and then that section should hopefully just lift off and then we may have a bracket in the middle we need to pull out so these three bolts here 15 mil these three were a 17 and then I can come out so this bracket looks like there is four, I think. So four bolts. So those ones there. So that one there. One down below, one next to it. And that one up there, they are 10 mil. So I'll undo those and pop it out. So access from the bottom for this bracket is much easier. So you can see the four bolts, one, two, three four that we need to remove so coming from the bottom you'll have an easier time at it okay all that uh, bracketry is all clear so you can see we've got plenty of room to work now now I'll just point out here the tensioner indicator we could probably sh actually probably show you on the, the new one where is it so when that's tensioned up correctly that arrow there should line up with that arrow there uh, it's gonna be a bit hard to probably film but the water pump is retained by three uh, hex heads there's one over there and there's one on the bottom so just there so the unfortunate thing with that is we can loosen it to loosen those three to undo the tension on the belt 
uh, but in order to remove it fully, we need to take off that backing plate, uh, which unfortunately means that I believe it's all one piece, so these cam pulleys need to come off as well. So we'll get this belt off first, and actually I'll, I'll drain the coolant first, actually, before I crack that, so that'll be where I'm at now. Now hopefully you can see this, but on the right hand side of the radiator, all the way down the bottom, there is what looks like a little drain bung. So I'm going to crack that and hopefully catch some coolant. That didn't do too badly for the spillage. Uh, just a little bit. That drain comes out through that little port there, so that's real handy. Uh, so these Allen bolts are a 5mm and I'm trying to work one handed again. Now I've drained all the coolant, so I can just back these off a little bit. I have actually already loosened them because I cracked them off before the coolant had completely drained and as you can see we get a bit of coolant dripping out again. So I'm going to use my homemade tool now just to attempt to back this uh, water pump off because like I said earlier this is the main part of the tension. Now, I don't know if it's going to fit exactly the same because I don't know if it's the same size between the replacement and the new, but uh, if we just lift that up, that's pulling the tension off. And I don't know if that's going you know, as feels like as far as it's going to go. You can get that to a certain point and you can move it by hand. So off comes this main belt. And like I said earlier, uh, I've got to get this back cover off uh, in order to get that pump out. So I'm going to remove the tensioner pulley. So it's three bolts there, there are 12 mil. And I'm just going to pull out this idler pulley as well because I've got a new one in the kit. So that's a 14 mil uh, bolt there. So those are off, they're going to need to stay off for the moment. So we're going to pull these uh, cam pulleys off. Now I'll make sure to, well, it's Pretty important, I think, just to make sure you mark or take note of which one's which. So they are different, uh, obviously different shape. So make note, that's the way it's coming out on yours. 17mm uh, bolt on these. And I'm just going to use, I know it's kind of rough, but just my screwdriver just to basically hold it in place and stop it from turning. These will be keyed or they'll have some sort of key to locate on the camshaft so we know that the timing mark's gonna go back where they're gonna go so it doesn't really matter too much. All right, so I've got uh, this cam pulley off. Now I've taken, there's four bolts that hold this back cover on. So there's one here. So I've had to take this pulley off to get to that one because there's just no way I can get uh, the socket through the pulley. This one here I've, is behind uh, that pulley. I've been able to undo that one, so I've left that in place. I'm gonna try and leave that one there for now and see how we go. I do need to remove that uh, cam position sensor because this cover goes around behind it, so I'll just need to loosen that off and pop it out of the way. There is one bolt that is just here. Now, these ones up here were a 10 mil. This one here was a 12 mil. And then there's one that's hidden inside this little uh, housing here. That's a 10 mil also. The cam position sensor bolts are also 10 mil. All right, so I've got no idea if this is gonna come out or not. I'm hoping I can slide it down, but nah, it looks like it's gonna come over that little tab there. So that pulley's definitely gonna come out. Alrighty, that pulleys out, so get that cam position sensor out of the way. And there we go. Now we can 
see we can get that water pump out pretty easily. All that effort just for that. Now it is worth noting that oil pump, ah, uh, oil pump, corn pump, uh, you got that cut out there so that sits in this particular way here. So it sits up to that top corner. So just spend a bit of time and clean up, get my hand in there, this face here. So just that real inner section is where the O-ring sits. So just make sure that's clean so it doesn't leak. Okay, I'm gonna smash most of this back together. Uh, it's just a reversal of pretty much how we pulled everything apart. I will get back to you uh, when it comes to lining all the timing lights back up on the belt and Talk specs, I'll make sure I throw all those where I can find them in the description below. So please check that out for those. And yeah, we'll see you back uh, when we've got the belt back on and we're lining the marks up. So everything's all back together now. We've got our idler pulley, tensioner pulley, new water pump in, uh, cam pulley's back on. Everything's all ready to go. So now it's just a matter of putting the new belt on. So what I'm gonna do is make sure the crank is lined up, which it is. Get the belt on, uh, pull up tight on that uh, pulley, run it up through this non-tension side, get this, uh, these two marks lined up and get the belt on this way and then around and, and then we'll get the tension. Right, so I just used my little locking tool just to get the cams lined up uh, before when I put the belt on. So like I said, work my way back from that tension side. Now I'm just going to give these uh, water pump bolts just a bit of a nip, uh, just so when I rotate it, it's going to hold in place. All right, so it takes a little bit of dicking about to get these to line up perfectly. Like sometimes you might have to go back and move a tooth here and there. Uh, just mark your belt when you get one right. Uh, so you mark your belt in relation to your pulley, and then way you can basically, when it all springs back and falls apart, you can just go back to where you were before, and then just alter one tooth at a time. So I put tension on uh, on here, and as you can see, we've uh, the second arrow is behind that one, so it's all lined up. All lined up the top, lined up at the bottom. So that is all ready to go back together now. Just another point as well uh, when getting those timing marks lined up. So I've gone, turned the crank twice uh, and then just check your alignment again. Uh, it's just a, basically a double check. Make sure your tension is still where it's supposed to be. Uh, like I said, it's just a double check to make sure when you put some load on that belt, uh, it's just where it needs to be. I've done that and it's all good. So I'm going to go and finish this, uh, basically finish this all up. I don't think you need to see the reverse of the basically stripped down. It's the same thing really. Uh, like I said uh, earlier, I'll throw some torque specs in the description where I can find them. To be honest, I'm just doing all this off the top of my head uh, with a little bit of info I found off the internet in general. So yeah, it's uh, if you got some use out of this video, thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate the view. Don't forget to give it a, a like, a thumbs up, all that stuff. Throw a comment below. And subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And uh, hey, maybe even a super thanks if you're feeling generous. So anyway, I'll uh, see you on the next one. Cheers, people.